So as we have Word open, good. Don't forget that we can uh, right click and pin to taskbar down here to have it just always be down there. So for lesson one, here's kind of our objectives and our Microsoft Office skills that we'll learn. Uh, just some tools, we've kind of went over creating a document and saving, some template stuff, how to print properly, and then just kind of everything about Word and what we see on screen and where things are and how I name things. So when I say things in the future, you guys know what I'm referring to. So we have our blank Word doc open. To start, all of this area at the top where all the buttons are, that's called the ribbon, okay, the ribbon. So I'll say that every day. Right above the ribbon, home, insert, design, those are called tabs. So I'll say on the layout tab or on the view tab, okay, those are tabs. Inside the ribbon are groups. So we have clipboard group, font group, paragraph group. So what's more likely will, will be heard, I'll say on the home tab in the font group, click this looking button that's how it that that's how it's going to go so that's kind of how i help you guys navigate to where things are so more often than not you guys can be looking at your screen while i'm saying the stuff that we're doing and you don't have to double take from your screen to the board back to your screen um, try to make that as easy as i can oh uh, the last thing with our ribbon so we have ribbon tabs groups is this little bottom right button that's called a dialog box launcher. It does exactly as it sounds. It launches a dialog box. That's all it does. So it just has buttons that aren't on the ribbon inside of the dialog box. So if I click this font dialog box, we don't have small caps, all caps. That's not a button in here. Uh, and then we have all the other text effects and we can set something as our default and all this other stuff here as well. But that's what the dialog box is for. It's just stuff that's not shown on the ribbon. Uh, all the way up here, that's our title. So obviously we haven't saved this yet. So it just says document one. Top left area where we have our save button, undo and redo. That's called the quick access toolbar. And then I have something up there that you guys don't, which is the ABC check button. So we're going to add that. They have that little drop down button there. Go ahead and click that. And then click spelling and grammar. And that will add the little ABC check button up there for you to use. Now that that's there, and we know that it's there as well. One of my pet peeves is having a computer that can spell check for you and turning in stuff that's misspelled. I am not a perfect typer, so I have to use it quite often. It has all the red underlines when you make mistakes. Um, I just don't see any reason to have stuff ever turned in uh, with spelling mistakes. We can just click this. Oh, I'm good. If it has mistakes, you probably don't have like a 20 page paper that you're going to have to fix all of them at once because if you're like me, as soon as you see it wrong, you want to fix it. So I just, just always verify real quick. Okay, it's good. And then you hit save and then you're done. Um,
we went over saving, file, save as, double click this PC. Your guys stuff is in documents, make sure we choose the name. More often than not, it's going to be your last name and then whatever the title of the assignment is. Let's go ahead and type our name. And then for example purposes, we're going to hit enter three times, a space bar a few times, enter a few more times, and then tab a couple times. So before I even move on and say what we did that for, this flashing point here, that's called the insertion point. That's just wherever that is, is where when I start typing or I insert a picture or whatever, wherever that's flashing, that's where it's gonna go. My mouse right now looks like an eye, that's called the eye beam. Wherever I click, that's where it's gonna go unless I haven't had, you know, we tab this over and things. So the reason we did all that clicking, in the paragraph group, click that top right button. It's like a, two lines and the backwards P. If you hover over it, it should say show slash hide. We're on the home tab, paragraph group, top right button. So all this is, this is, these are always there, they're just hidden normally. We just have to click this button. To turn them on. Um, this is for if you're wondering, why is my text spaced out like that? Or why can't I get this figured out? I need to change the alignment. I can turn this on and, and I can see, oh, I accidentally pressed tab there. Maybe that's why it's over. Or there's not three lines here, there's two. I just need to change the spacing after so they're tighter. Um, that's where turning this show hide button on and off is helpful. So if you wanna to try to edit and fix some things to look the way that you want it to look, that's what it's for. You're gonna have a lot of assignments that's like the first step, turn this on. You don't have to. I can't stand having a paper full of text and then a dot between every word and this at the end of every paragraph. It's just too much stuff on my screen. You never have to have this on. I do not care whatsoever. All right, it's not that big a deal. I just wanted you guys to know that it's there to help yourself if you need it. Now I want to press enter enough that we get a new page. So just hit enter enough times to where we can get a new page. Uh, here. Here's a vocab term for you. See if you guys remember. Uh, 
If I'm typing, 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 I get to the end of a line, and it does this for me. Automatically goes to the next line. I don't have to hit enter. It just goes to the next line. Anybody remember what that was called? I don't blame you. We typed a lot of vocab. That's called word wrap. And it's just a feature that's default in Word to where if I get to the end of a end of a line, it knows automatically to just start the, the text that I'm typing on the next line. And that's all it is. Word wrap. Uh, let's say we're going to save this. So we went over that file save as this PC. Now we can change the file type. By default, it's just a Word doc. But right underneath where we save it is save as type. So we have Word doc, some macro, uh, an older version of Word, a template which we'll use occasionally. And then there's a bunch of other ones. But... PDF would be the last one that you might use. And then that, all it does is when you save it, instead of it being an updated Word document, it's a old version, or it's a template, or it's, it's a PDF now. Um, those are your options for when we save to change the file type. We can also go to export here and just click create a PDF or an XPS or whatever other file type we would like. So they, they added this export button because not a lot of people realize um, that they can do it right here. It's easier when you have um, giant buttons that do it for you. Oh, uh, let's close Word and then open a new blank. Actually, don't even open a blank document. Let's open Word so we're at this screen and if you guys just go to file open that works as well if you don't want to close but we aren't saving that one that we were on so here's where we can search <clears throat> for templates and templates are pre-made pre sometimes pre-filled documents to where we don't have to do all the work so they have some options here, like here's a brochure. They have a calendar that you know you don't have to make yourself. Some certificates. We're going to search for a resume. R-E-S-U-M-E, -E, resume. So a lot of these, they try to put together the cover letter for it and the resume. But I'm just going to click this Blue Spheres resume. If I click it once, I can kind of preview what it will look like. And then press Create. Or if I double click on it, I know I want that. It just downloads it and opens it right away. And then since this is a template, it's filled in with everything that I would want to put on. And it tells me what to put there. So first name, I just click there. Type my name. Surname, that's my last name. Put my job experience, the dates I work there, my job title, etc., etc. I could put my address on there, my phone number, email, if I have a website, maybe my uh, social media, my education. And all this is just pre fillable. I could right click on here and change my picture so, you know, that's actually me. That's what templates are great for. Everything is pre-made for you. All you got to do is type it in. You don't have to, I don't have to put a bar up here. I don't have to put this table and format this to look all pretty. It's, it's done for me. That's where templates are great. <clears throat> now we're not actually going to, but press control P as if we were going to print, or you could just go to file print. And then it takes us to print preview here. So that big button in the top, that actually prints. All right, simple enough. Just to the right, copies, how many do I want? 
and then we can choose our printer. So we're all on the school network. If you click that, you should have HS underscore D6. That's my classroom printer. So if it gets to a point where you know you got to print something for another class, that's my printer, HS D6. It's just my classroom num uh, number. Print all pages. If I drop down, they have some options there. Um, the main thing here is, let's say I have like a 10-page a paper, right? If I just want to print 1 through 5, I just type 1-5 in that pages area. And it'll only print those five pages. Or, what if I just want 2, 4, and 9? I type 2, comma, 4, comma, 9. And it'll only print those three, not all ten. Even past that, we can com com combine that. So I could say one through four, comma, eight, comma, ten. So pages one through four, and then eight, and then ten. So however you want to print your stuff, maybe you're trying to save paper, you know, that's how you can specify exactly what to print. Uh, one sided or both sides. My printer, like I told you guys, says both sides. Uh, the long edge and short edge just means if I have my paper like this and then it's going to be on the back side, long edge is like this and then short edge is like this. So most of the time you'll be long edge. Collated means let's say I have five copies of my 10 page paper. I want all 10 printed, and then all 10 again together, and then all 10 again together, so they're in order. Uncollated would mean it would print all 10 page 1s, and then all 10 page 2s, and then all 10 page 3s, which I, I don't really see any reason for that, especially because it's like in our library and in the office, our printers can even staple. So I, I would, if I change it here to that one, not only can I have it collated, I can add a staple in the top left. And some of them have like a three hole punch, things like that. So depending on what your printer can do, your options will change here. Uh, portrait and landscape. Portrait's just your piece of paper tall. Landscape is sideways. Letter, that's the default page size, eight and a half by 11 inches. Custom margins, that's just because we downloaded this template normally to just say normal. And then let's say I have 10 pages of paper. I'm going to try to pit, fix six pages on one piece of paper. You could try that, whatever you wanted to print. Most of the time, it's just going to be one page. So if you ever actually print, that's how you can, you can do that. So that's it for lesson one. I'm going to show you guys how we do some geometric stuff.